This video is going to cover how to use the virus data in ATAC. Um, we have a, a lot of info in ATAC um, through virus. We have a attack server that is bringing in um, aircraft position. And then we have video directly from the virus aircraft. And then we have the fire perimeters that they create while airborne and then um, host that we download automatically into ATAC. So the first thing I want to cover is the aircraft. There are seen the aircraft um, icons. You can see here this uh, tanker um, 80 from CAL FIRE, RSO. All this comes in via a server. Quick way you can get to your servers is right above your um, call sign. You click the little uh, TAC logo and that will open up all the TAC servers you're connected to. The ADSB server, or it may see, or it may say ADSB Fire 3.0 user. Regardless um, of the way you're connected, either through your own account or through that general account, that's that ADSB 3.0 user. Um, you'll see it up there. It'll say ADSB, the ADSB server us. You want to make sure that's uh, hasn't been turned off. So if you, you know, accidentally shut it off and and turn the uh, hit the checkbox. Uh, maybe you're having an internet connectivity. So if you're not seeing the aircraft, go there first and let's see if uh, you're connected. You want that to be green because that's how you'll see uh, virus. Okay. The next thing that we get um, um, from the aircraft uh, or from virus is we get uh, these uh, perimeters. So you can see one here. Um, here's a perimeter. You can see all these different perimeters. If you click on the perimeter, you do get some more information. So if I click on it and I hit at the six o'clock, I do get some meta metadata. Um, they're making an effort now in the description to put uh, the size of the fire. So you can see that's 30 acres there. And I wanna show you where that is at in ATAC. So that comes in via what we call a KML network link. Uh, this is uh, the language of Google or KML. And so when they're flying around, they produce these, they put them out uh, in a repository, and then ATAC calls on that repo every 120 seconds. And if there's new data, it will it will display it. So um, we're going to go to a little fire over here you know, that was out in Menifee a couple weeks ago. And you can see this this fire here, and you can see there's multiple polygons. So as, as the fire grew, they drew... Um, uh, new new perimeters all right and so and I'll show you another one out here live the rabbit fire is out here and you can see all these different polygons here as the fire has grown they just keep mapping it and you can see it going on and on um, if you want to uh, hide these polygons you can just uh, click on one and just hit the eyeball and then you can take out all of this old data and just have the most recent data here. You can change the color of this if you'd like. So if you click on that more info, you can go in here and hit the hit the pencil. And if you wanted that orange and you wanted to shade it in, you can do that that as as well. And go back and change it to its regular original color. All right. And let's say you wanted those back. So you want um, uh, that back. Um, you can just go back to uh, the KML network link uh, where they're hosted. And that's what I'm going to show you. So if you're not seeing these polygons, they're not showing up, uh, I want to show you where those turn on and off. So another thing I want to cover is this odd-shaped polygon here. This comes from the video. So if Firus takes a video, um, they host it on the web, and it does uh, create this polygon. We're trying to get it uh, separated out. Um, from the fire perimeters, but if you click on it, you'll notice it says type DPS. That's what that that is what what that is from. And again, we're trying to um, get that separated, and Intera is working on that right now. So um, if you see that, no, that's not the fire perimeter, and you can also hide that as well. So let's go um, where these um, are brought in at in ATAC. It's in the overlay man manager. So click on overlay manager. Scroll down to network resources. Network resources means it's coming from the internet. It's coming over the network. 
So it's it's hosted somewhere else and we're pulling it in. If you click on uh, Firus here and click this little pencil, you can see it's there's the address of where it's at out in the AWS, Amazon Web Services, and it's auto refreshing every 120 seconds. And even if you um, shut ATAC off and open it back up, those will still be there. Even if you have, don't have internet connectivity, it'll be there. All right. So if you want that content back that you lost, you can just hit the eyeball right here, hit the eyeball back, and they all come back to you. So if you're like, oh, I, I, I wanted that uh, polygon, where did it go? Um, again, clicking this eyeball, bring it back. I can go and, and hide these again. I can hide this one, especially if you've recolored it. All right. Hit the eyeball. It's all gone. So I've hidden all of them. I left the DPS. Bring it back and uh, they all come back. And it looks like if you've recolored it, it's it stays that way. Um, notice the shades of color are a little different. So I take that back. If you've recolored it, it looks like it stays um, that color. It's good to remember that this data streams over the internet. So if you don't have connectivity, if Fiverr publishes new data, you're not going to get it. Um, just to, to check to see if you are getting the latest streams, you go to Network Resources, you want to have this green check mark next to Firus. If it's not connected, um, then uh, you won't see it. So you want to make sure you've got the eyeball on and you've got this green check mark next to Firus. And uh, if you do have a red X there, you can just hit the download button and tell it to restream. So if it somehow, for some reason, um, auto refresh got uh, got maybe turned off you can make sure that's unchecked hit update and then again if you've got that red x just hit this hit this download button here tell it to stream and it should start streaming you can see intel 24 here uh they're flying out to a fire most likely the rabbit fire and if you ever need to find out where intel 12 or intel 24 aircraft are you can always click on i'll zoom out here for an example i'll click on the overlay manager click the magnifier just type Intel. And then you can see here you've got this Intel 12 that's a video alias. Don't click on that the one up top. You want to click on the second one, which is, is the Intel 24 aircraft. Click on that, and then it's going to zoom in uh, right to where the aircraft position is. And now it's moving forward and uh, heading towards uh, the fire. Once it gets on scene, it's going to start making laps. And that's when you can you know, typically tell that, hey, it's on station, it's going to start mapping and start its video transmission. If you're on the Slack channel um, from Cal OES that starts, that uh, gives information when the aircraft's been activated and when it's on scene and transmitting video, that's a way to know, hey, it's transmitting video. But I typically wait till it gets on scene and starts making some turns, and then I'll click on the aircraft and you'll activate the radio menu. At the 12 o'clock position is the play button. You can hit play and then it will start transmitting video. And what you're going to see when it when I do that is that it's going to um, produce another icon that says uh, Intel 24 in it and it's going to be blue. And let me try to explain how, how this is all working. These All these pink icons we see here, you can see star 94 or 93 from RSO, Intel 24, all these air tankers, so on and so forth, are coming from commercial enterprise. And that's coming from the internet. So I have all these ground receivers that are collecting this data, pushing up to some server, and then it's retransmitting it out. And so by the time we receive all that, you're getting about a, a four second delay over real time. When we play the video, we're getting it real time. It's coming off the aircraft um, over their SATCOM terminal. We're bringing in the video. The video has the location of the aircraft with it. It has what's called a slant angle. So you'll see a line off the video to its target on the ground. We call that the sensor point of interest or the spy. So you'll see all that once I start playing the video. And so there isn't a confused and you're not, there isn't two aircraft there. You're just seeing that because once we hit play, that feed from um, that commercial server still comes through and we also get uh, the real time uh, location of the aircraft. So once they get on station, I'll, I'll hit play and, uh, and we'll see what this looks like. 
All right, so Intel 2.4 is on scene of the Gibble fire. Uh, they did not go to the Rabbit fire, which is up here. They had a new start, the Gibble fire in Hemet. So I'm going to click on the aircraft, hit the play button. Sometimes on the left, the, the screen may go black while the aircraft is uh, connecting. But what you'll see on the right is uh, a video of what the aircraft sensor is seeing. And on the left, so there's a thermal image right there. You can see the target of where that's looking at on the ground. And you can see those structures uh, right around there on Gibble Road. And then, like I mentioned before, you have the pink. Uh, what's the aircraft position that we're getting from that server? And you'll see it's about four seconds behind where the blue marker is the live location that we're getting um, from this video feed. And then if you wanted to ever mark like, hey, where, where is this fire at since the target's on it, you can just click on that and drop a target. And now you actually have a target. And then you can rename that whatever you wanted if you wanted to name that the Gibble fire. But now you actually have a, a, a location. And then if you ever wanted to put this in 3D too, you can just hold down on the north arrow, put it in 3D, rotate it, and then you can actually you know, tilt the map if you'd like and spin it around get a little better you know look at, at what this looks like if you want to have the video uh, a little bit wider bigger shot you can just grab uh, a little bar just left of the video and swipe it out and then just hit the back back button and if you want to stop playing the video hit the back button and uh, or if you just want to hide it, you can s swipe it to the right as well. If you want to get out of 3D, you just hit the 3D, and hold down, get rid of it, hold down on the th on the uh, map rotate, and now you're back up in north. So that's uh, you know how you can use um, the live video with the Intel 24 aircraft. Um, if you want it to stop playing. Just hit the back button and it'll stop playing the video. You know when the video is playing because you'll have that separate uh, blue aircraft icon. All right, now you can see that the Intel 2.4 has mapped the fire and published it, and now ATAC is bringing that in uh, with this green line as a perimeter. Like I mentioned before, you can click on it and get some more information. So we'll click on it at the 6 o'clock. And now we can see that it's eight acres and the mission was named uh, Gibble. Let's say you wanted to do a little bit more with it. I wanted to know, well, it's eight acres, but you know, how much hose am I going to need to go around this fire? This is where the fire area survey tool can come in handy. So if I click on uh, my toolbar overflow and I go down to the fire area survey tool, and I can start a new survey if I want, or I can use any of these other surveys if I just want to add something. So if I use test, I want to add a new uh, survey, I'm going to hit plus, I'm going to click area, and then I'm going to use select shape. And I'm just going to click the perimeter here. It's listed as gibble, I hit done. And now it's added this new untitled uh, object here, and you can see now we're, see below where it says CA-BDF saw pit. You can see that's red and it's a polygon. It's because I've, I've renamed it. I'm going to show you what I do here. So I'm going to click on where it says untitled, and it's a black line. That's why I can't see it above there. But you can see on the left, you've got this black line on top of the green line. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click on uh, the pencil to edit it. And now I can name this Gibble if I'd like. Hit done. Down below on the color, I'm going to change that to red. And now I can choose to change the width, line thickness. And if I hit closed, now it's going to make it a polygon. And now I can change change uh, the color there as far as the saturation. 
I can change the line cell from dash to solid, whatever I'd like. And then I hit end editing, hit back, and now I have that. So now I've got this, this shape, it's colored. If I click on it, and I want to get more information, I can see, all right, well, it's 8.14 8, 8 acres, but the perimeter is nearly 3,000 feet. So I'm going to need 3,000 feet minimum to get around. So just another kind of way you can get some more information at ATAC based on uh, these uh, virus perimeters. Well, I hope this video was helpful in understanding different ways virus data can be used to improve your situational awareness in ATAC.